Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. And uh, one of his good friends and my new friends, Graham Stephan, has dropped by. Uh, big time real estate YouTube guy. Everybody knows who he is. Netflix famous. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Four million subscribers on YouTube. That's pretty impressive. It is. It's uh, And it's incredible to be here because I really feel like I uh, got a lot of my start watching you. And you were the one that really forged a path on YouTube before I even started. Uh, so seeing you do it first gave me almost the permission that, wow, maybe I could do it too. Yeah, and, and then the weird thing is I actually didn't forge anything. It was just YouTube versions of this show. It was just YouTube watching in while we do this show. That's all no. I did. And, and our YouTube team clipping that stuff up and running it around. But... Uh, Graham got his real estate license at 18 years old. He sold over $130 million of residential real estate. He owns a bunch of real estate. I won't say how much. I happen to know because of some stuff we taped earlier today. But uh, has done very, very, very well in the real estate world and is uh, well known. Okay, so I got my real estate license when I turned 18, too. Three weeks after I turned 18 years old. My parents were in the business, though. Yours weren't. What inspired you to get into the business? The truth is that I didn't have good grades in high school because I just wanted to work. And when I didn't get into college, I thought, I have to do something for myself. I want to get into doing something where I could be my own boss. And I thought, well, I could just go into real estate. I get my real estate license. And so as I was getting my license, I'd go to open houses, talking to other agents. And in the process, I just fell in love with it as a career. So once I got licensed, uh, I began working at Coldwell Banker. And just instantly, I was obsessed with it. It's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to work. And so for those first really four to five years, I would work seven days, 10 to 12 hours a day, but it never felt like work. And that's what I loved about it is that I could see incredible properties, meet people that I would never ordinarily come into contact with, uh, make great clients, friends, connections. It just, the opportunity was limitless. So when I got my license at 18, um, I had like a suit that didn't fit real well and one suit. The other suit was like a disco suit. And these were my dress up clothes to go show houses in. And I had like a Tom Selleck mustache. You remember Magnum PI? You don't remember that. Please bring it back, Dave. Bring it back. The Ferrari, right? uh, Because I thought it made me look older, right? Because I knew I was just a pup. And uh, I still had trouble getting people to take me seriously because I was so stinking young. Did Did you run into that? Oddly, no, but I think a lot of people gave me a chance because I was so young. So starting at 18, uh, and I look young now even, I'm 32, and, you know, I still get, like, early 20s, or I'm sure I could pass. But I think in that sense, they saw that I was really dedicated to helping them, and I would do anything. And that was my advantage, I think, early on, is that I would take the deals no one else wanted to take, and I saw that as my opportunity that there's all this business out there that isn't worth anyone else's time. But when I'm 18, like earning a few hundred dollars is a big deal for me. And so I would take on that business and I would work 24 seven. So if they call me at two o'clock in the morning, I'll get back to them. I'll pick up the phone. I would pick up the phone if I'm sleeping at night. Uh, it didn't matter. I'd respond to emails at midnight. Uh, so I would do anything. And I think because of that, uh, people felt comfortable and they knew that I also wasn't sophisticated enough to like ever screw anybody over. So they knew I could never take advantage of them. I, I couldn't lie to them. I couldn't do anything besides just do my best. And that's mm. what I did. So wh- wh- how old were you when you bought your first piece of investment property? Uh, 21. 21, you bought your first rental house. And you paid cash for it. Cash, yeah. Uh, that means you were making some money as an agent. Yes. Yeah, I really did my best to save as much money as I could. And uh, you know, in the beginning, I saved because I didn't know when my next commission was going to be. And so sometimes I would go a few months without earning a dollar, but I was working like 12 hours a day. And other months, I'd make a lot. And so because I didn't know, I just figured, well, my default should just be saving as much as possible. And I just continued doing that and just focusing on work but saving. And then when I got to a point, this was 2011, the market had really, I felt, bottomed, and I started noticing some of my clients beginning to buy. Like, the smartest guys that I knew began buying real estate. And I had this money saved up, and I thought, well, if they're all doing this too, maybe there's something to it. And so I started spending my time, uh, you know, alongside helping clients is, well, now I'm going to look for myself, and let me see all these properties and figure out an area that I could buy in. And that's what led to that. Your YouTube viewers know you as being frugal. Jack, your co-host says you're cheap. <laughs> um, so... Uh, 
I mean, is all you do is like work and pile up money? I mean, what, what do you do? You have a life. Uh, I love my work, and that's uh, I would say ninety percent of the time I just want to work. Um, I don't like sometimes Saturdays. It's uh, it's hard for me because the market's closed. I love just being involved, like making videos. I love it so much that like that for me is fun. So I don't really feel like I, I need much other than just being able to work. Um, as far as expenses go, I mean it's a lot is discretionary. Um, all you can eat sushi. I would say is my big treat is like wow. thirty dollar all you can eat sushi in Las Vegas. Notoriously, you don't spend money on coffee. You prefer to make oh, it at gosh, home. Yeah. You'll use old coffee and put it in the fridge. I bought you some iced coffee this morning because I knew you were struggling, and so that was my donation to you. Thank you. But the reason we struck up this friendship was because we reacted to one of your TikTok videos where you were talking about how the best financial move you ever made was living on less than you make. Mm -hmm. And that has been one of our principles since Dave started 30 years ago. Where does that come from? Why are you not out there living the flashiest of lifestyles, just dropping money left and right? I always just, I think I naturally enjoyed just saving money. It was a weird sort of obsession of mine where I felt like, you know, that was something I had direct control over how much money I was to save. And I took it almost like a challenge to see, like, how could I cut back and how could I optimize my spending to get the best bang for the buck? And a lot of that was think it was strategic. It, it's, you know, could, I would go out for dinner or I could make the dinner at home. And my experience was just as good if I have a friend over or, you know, if, if I'm going out, I'll get an appetizer instead of an entree because it's just as filling, but it's, a, you know, half the price. So I just find all these little ways to save. And I just it became a habit, but I enjoyed it. I think part of that was like figuring out, like you asked me earlier what, what the, the most frugal thing that I would do, and it was using grocery bags as trash bags. Instead of spending to, money on trash bags. I didn't want to do it because I have the grocery bags. I don't want, I don't want to waste them. I don't got to throw them away, and they work just as well. So and now a you're a minimalist. Now it's trendy. And now it's trendy. Yeah. But Now yeah. we gave it, now we gave it, our, our friends gave it a name. That's it. So. <laughs> Good stuff. Graham Stephan is our guest this segment. He has one of the top YouTube shows on real estate and finance, over almost 4 million folks subscribing. Be sure and check him out there on YouTube, and uh, we'll be on a coming episode someday out there uh, that we worked on today, uh, this morning, before we got on the air here. So rich people are all selfish and greedy, and they only look out for themselves. You ever heard that one? All the time. All the time. Um, I personally believe that, and not not all the time, but just in a broad sense that people are off, they often make money in proportion to the amount of value they provide. So I've always seen it in terms of how many people I could reach is, is how much value I'm providing. And a lot of what I talk about is really just living below your means, investing consistently, and thinking of different ways to improve yourself financially. And that's just also what I'm personally obsessed with. So I just talk about things that I am personally doing and find enjoyment in and try to add an entertaining spin to things. Mm, that, yeah, it's one of our core values here is marketplace service. If you help enough people, you don't have to worry about money. And I don't see any evil in that. Inherently, you seem like a nice guy to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so there you go. You got hey, my vote. I pass, pass the test. Thank you. <laughs> but you really, you're yeah. helping a lot of young people, especially, who are wanting to build wealth and they're not wanting to do a job they hate and wait 35 years to have money. Now, part of that leads to a lot of people being broke, right? Yeah. How do you kind of guard against that when you're giving advice? Oh, gosh. I feel like there's a way to do it safely and smartly that's not, like, hypey. I, 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 I'm personally not the one to, like, risk it all. I, I'm actually fairly risk adverse, and I really prefer to, to take a safer approach where I, I just don't like losing money. So if I can you and stay Dave away have from that in common, that's for sure. Yeah. So if, for me, losing money is so much more painful than making. So I like I try to steer away from losing. And, and if we can improve in one way, it's uh, you know making sure you keep what you have. Thanks for dropping by, my friend. Thank you. I really Good appreciate it. I'm honored to have you with us. Graham it's Stephan, an honor to be here. Graham Stephan, ladies and gentlemen, be sure and check him out on his YouTube channel. You will be visiting him with about four million of his closest friends. This is the Ramsey Show. <laughs>